What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while since we did an EG4 solar air conditioner update video, so I thought I would do one today. I've made a couple changes to how I run this thing over the summer, the main one being I have actually disconnected it from the solar array, which sounds a little crazy being a solar air conditioner, but I promise I do have a good reason. So the main reason I took it off the array is I actually upgraded my 1200 watt array to a 2500 watt array from Sirius PV. These are the 415 watt bifacials. I've done a couple videos on these recently, so I'll pop up a link if you want to check any of those videos out, but these have been working great and they're allowing me to make a lot more power. I'm storing this power, running the air conditioners through the night and running a lot more loads than I would have otherwise been able to on the dedicated solar array for the EG4. So I've repurposed the IMO disconnect. A lot of you guys recommended this from Signature Solar. It's held up great. I moved it uh, to this side of the pergola here. When I took it apart, everything was still in great shape. No water intrusion, nothing like that. The old Amazon one I had definitely did not stand up as well as this thing has. I've also got the array grounded finally. I've got a ground rod pounded into the dirt underneath the deck. Everything is all legit and uh, working great. So I'll take you inside, show you the battery setup, and explain a little bit more how I run this thing. So this is what I'm using to power the EG4 mini split these days. This is the 6000 XP and the indoor wall mount battery. Many of you are pretty familiar with this already if you're regulars to the channel. If you're not, I'd ask you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. But this is what I'm using to uh, make a little bit better use of the pergola. With the dedicated array to the mini split, I could only really run the mini split on that. I didn't have too many other locations for solar. So now I run all the power to this. It gives me the ability to run the garage mini split. This is the Eco Solaris. I've done a number of videos on this as well. I'll pop a link up if you want to check out any of those videos, but it's working really well. It allows me to uh, just split up the power a little more effectively and make a good use of the solar that I have. So a lot of you guys asked me in the comments, how much power do I need to get my EG4 mini split to run all night long? So we're going to answer that today. I'm going to leave the EG4 mini split running all night long. It's uh, 7 30 PM and the sun is pretty much gone here in uh, the North for me. So we're just going to run it on battery all night and we'll check back in in the morning and and see how much power we've used. I can get around 28 hours of continuous runtime on that mini split out of this battery, but uh, we'll let it run all night and just see how it does. And before we head inside and have a look at the mini split, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to my sister's company, Stick to the Woods. They are a woodworking shop and this is one of their more popular products. This is a, kind of a higher end, fancier looking wireless charging pad. They thought the uh, current market of wireless chargers was a little bit cheap, plastic, gimmicky. So these are all hardwood handmade uh, wireless chargers. They have different fabric patterns. They actually hand make these circuit boards on the back. These copper boards are etched and cut by them, soldered. These are all LEDs on the corner. So when you set your phone on it, the uh, LEDs light up, give you kind of a warm glow underneath the charger. And uh, yeah, they're really cool. I'll put the links to everything below. They're going to be doing a giveaway. They also have a discount code SMITHVAC15 for 15% off. So check out their social media, their website. All their info is right there. And I'll also have the links below. They're going to be doing a giveaway. So head on over there. Anyone that watches this uh, channel can get entered to win just by following the instructions on their page. Okay, so here's the EG4 mini split indoor head. You guys are probably familiar with this. It's been running all day long, set for 72 degrees, keeping the house nice and comfortable. We are coming to the end of the solar day. It has actually started raining pretty hard out now, so we're not gonna be making any more power. We're gonna be starting to dip into the battery. Like I said, in the garage, it's 7.30 p.m. We're sitting at 100% state of charge, and we're just gonna let this thing run all night long, and we'll check in periodically. All right, guys, I'm just going to give you a one update before I head inside for the night. It is just after 9 p.m., 9.10. Um, we're doing pretty good so far. We are only down 5%. We're sitting at 95% state of charge. Mini split has already ramped right down. It's running around 250 watts, and I've got it on this extension cord right here. We have a couple other things running inside, like the dishwasher and stuff. So I put the mini split on the extension cord and I switched the generator panel to utility. So the only thing running on the wall mount battery is the mini split. So we're just gonna let it run all night long, check back in in the morning, and finally answer the question for you guys, how much power do you need to get through the night? Well, it's 8 a.m. and everything worked well through the night. It's about 71 degrees in the house currently. And looking at the app, this thing actually turned itself off just before midnight and did not run the rest of the night. It ended up cooling off pretty good last night. Today is going to be another cloudy day. Not going to be making a whole lot of power today, but we'll head out to the garage, take a look at the numbers and see how much power we actually used. 
So here's the timestamp for you, just a few minutes before 8 a.m. And down here on the battery, we're sitting at 86%. So we only use 14% to get through the night. That's about two kilowatt hours. So you could get through the night on two 100 amp hour lithium phosphate batteries or something like a Blue Eddy AC200L, one of those, you know, 2000 watt hour power stations, um, as long as the temperature is not too hot. Obviously being an inverter compressor, this thing ramps up the higher the demand. So last night was a pretty light night, probably worth testing again in the future. All right, guys, it's a little bit after 9.30 in the morning. The unit kicked back on around 9 and has already ramped down to about 300 watts, slightly less, and we are actually making more power than that from solar already this morning. So we're coming up on 87% state of charge. So um, yeah, on a day like today, this thing can run this thing no problem. Leaves me lots of extra power to do other things, run pretty much all my other appliances, at least in the summertime. So for the winter, this thing does use a lot more power. So I'm gonna go back and hook up another IMO disconnect with some MC fours on it just so I can add some solar back into the mix directly during the winter I'm going to put one of my ground mounts out in the yard and just have some panels on there to give this thing a little bit of extra power to get through the cloudy days and the cold weather Okay, here we have it. The IMO disconnect is all wired up. I'm gonna go ahead and get the cover on. I like to pass both connections up through the bottom of the case. Just gives it a little bit more weather tightness. This looks a little confusing, but positive goes across the middle, up and over, and back down to this terminal here. Negative sort of does the same thing. These are kind of a crisscross pattern. It makes a lot more sense if you're looking at the wiring diagram or at the manual. So I actually saved these little rubber Sirius PV caps from the install video. These came on every set of panels and they are really great for protecting your MC4s when they're out in the elements. I saved a couple because I knew they would come in handy. So I've got them on there. We'll keep those protected until winter when I'll have these plugged in. Once again, this was a pretty fun test. Everything is still running well with the EG4 mini split. Um, no real changes this summer other than taking it off the array and putting it on the 6000 XP, which most of you already knew about. If not, I'd ask you to hit that subscribe button once again and stay tuned to the channel. So I'll have the links to everything you see in the video below. You can check out Signature Solar for any of this equipment. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.